service this morning um fantastic to see everybody again sadly still over zoom for most of us um just uh, usual rules for anybody who's um uh, not remembered or not been on, not joined us before um please keep yourself on mute during the main part of the service um unless you're asked to unmute or unless um you are taking part obviously um if you are in the church building please follow the guidance of the stewards there um there is a notice sheet uh, which if you most of us are getting by email um if you didn't get it by email please have a look on the website it's available there uh, if you want to get it by email and you're not doing please let us know um, and again, if you're not sure how, there's contact details on the website, thomasrisley.org. Um, I do have one additional notice this morning, which is we are looking for volunteers to help uh, collect um, donations for the um, harvest celebration uh, next month. Um, I think actually it's going to be the coming Saturday um, hopefully somebody will correct me if I'm wrong uh, but if you if you want to do that have a word with uh, Helen Bennett or one of the elders or me um, and we'll we'll sort it out if you're available to help uh, in church uh, there will be a prayer room available at the end as usual uh, you will see an invite pop up on your screen if you wish to go and join the prayer please accept the invite and if you don't then that's perfectly fine as well just just ignore it and it'll go away or, or click no or cancel whatever it whatever it offers uh, before i hand over to dave thurston who's going to lead us uh, lead our service this morning shall we just um, pray together briefly Father, we just thank you that we are able to meet. Um, we pray that we will be able to be all together in the same room sooner rather than later, but um, we are doing our part to help get through this virus. Father, we give thanks that perhaps the end in, might be in sight in some ways, or there are positive, um, there are positive signs. Uh, signs of hope um, and, and we give thanks for that and and just pray that we'll all be able to stick to the rules so that we can get through this sooner as soon as possible father just uh, pray for dave as he leads the service this morning um, just ask you to to give him the words you want us to hear and to give us the hearts to hear it in jesus name Amen. Over to you, Dave. Yes. Thank you um, for that. Uh, I was going to, to open with prayer, but I think uh, I think Steve's already done that. Um, but uh, just a, a very warm welcome. Um, as always, um, you know, you're going to be sat for hours because I'm preaching. Um, well, maybe not. Um, and... Um, but uh, and as always, um, something slightly different. Um, so data's first emotion is what the uh, the title of this, the <laughs> of the service is. That might make some sense by the time we finish. I don't know. But um, we'll start well with the uh, the Lord's prayer, um, which I think Fiona is going to lead for us. Thank you, David. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, um, there are three dogs going completely nuts um, here, um, but there is a, an audio filter, so hopefully it won't be quite so distracting, although it's probably more distracting to me than to you. So, um, Steve, you've drawn the long or the short straw to do birthdays, and surely there must be a birthday soon. Um, statistics say there has to be a birthday. So. Does anybody have a birthday this morning? Or this week, actually, does anybody have a have a birthday uh, between now and eleven a.m.? Oh, no, never mind. Now, does anybody have a birthday in the coming week, or that we have missed in the last Until Christmas? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, no, I can't see anybody waving. It's just terrible, absolutely terrible. Uh, nobody, uh, nobody at uh, Mission Control uh, over. Wearing no. their hands, waving their hands over there. No, okay. The prayer work you can even prevent people having birthdays. <laughs> right. Okay, then. So I'll have our first reading, which Derek is going to give us. Um, Jonah three, um, verse ten to four, verse eleven. If you uh, do have your Bible with you, um, then. Um, Sometimes good to follow along with your translation um, as well. Okay. So this is um, Jonah 3, verse 10, to Jonah 4, verse 11. Jonah's anger at the Lord's compassion. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. But to Jonah this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry? Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort, and Jonah was very happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said, I'm so angry, I wish I were dead. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people and their animals? who cannot tell their right hand from their left. Amen. Thank you. And I think it's, is it Maggie? <clears throat> this is Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 to 16, the parable of the work of the For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day, and he sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon 
and about three in the afternoon I did the same thing. About five in the afternoon he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those who came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. Those who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I'm not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Um. Thank you for that. So, do you remember the full lockdown? Of course you do. But do you remember if you started doing something during that time, which has carried on into these slightly less lockdown times? Maybe it was taking regular walks. Maybe it was learning a language. Sanskrit speakers now. For Amory and I, it was <clears throat> watching Star Trek. Sorry, I have to make this public. I'm a Trekkie. And you know, I think I might have converted Anne Marie as well. We started by watching all of the original series. There are only 79 episodes. And then we moved on to the next generation with Patrick Stewart as Captain John Luke Picard. One of the characters in the series is played by Brent Spinner. He's called Data, and he's an android, a robot, if you will. His inventor created two identical brothers, one called Data and the other called Law. Law has a chip in him which enables him to experience emotions, but Data doesn't. However, Data desperately wants to become human. An essential part of being human is exposing, is experiencing emotions. 152 episodes into the series, yes, 152. Data finally experiences an emotion. And it's not the emotion he was expecting. If he's being attacked by an alien, which one doesn't really matter at this point. And in defending himself, he becomes angry. But worse, when he's killed the alien, he feels pleasure in doing so. His emotion experiencing brother exploits this to try and create a superior race of androids that will wipe out all biological life. Many of the episodes have these underlying bigger themes. This one, of course, is about a self-appointed group who see their race as superior to everyone else. At the end of the episode, Data is offered the chip, recovered from his brother, to experience emotions he turns it down. An interesting emotion for the writers to choose as his first emotion, anger. As Data tries to wrestle with his experience, he asks whether anger is always a bad emotion, which is quite a profound question. Is it? He's told that it's not necessarily as simple as that. It's what you do with the emotion 
that's important. We can think of someone like Martin Luther King, who was angry at the discrimination in America in the 1960s and focused that righteous anger, if you will, into seeking change through peaceful means to American segregation. What about us though? Do you ever get angry? I used to teach conflict resolution and control and restraint. Conflict resolution is interesting because of what people's reactions are to different situations. For example, what would you do if someone pushed in front of you whilst you were queuing at the supermarket? How about you've been edging along the motorway for what might seem like hours and then someone, sorry, they usually seem to be driving a BMW, drives all the way down the hard shoulder and tries to wedge their car into the tiny gap between you and the car in front? Or what if you saw someone being cruel to an animal or a person? When we think of Jonah, we think of a whale. Well, sorry, I usually do. We don't often think about why Jonah ended up in the whale. I'm not sure we often think about why he got angry with God afterwards. God, at the beginning of the book, commands Jonah to go to Nineveh, to preach against it because it, its, its wickedness has come up before me. However, even though it was God's plan, Jonah didn't want anything to do with it. Why? Well, in Jonah chapter 1, it's not that obvious. But if you read through Jonah, it becomes clear by the time we get to chapter 4. Jonah doesn't want to go to Nineveh because he knows that if they turn away from their wickedness, that's a lovely old-fashioned word, that, then God won't destroy them. So he runs away and ends up in a storm and then a whale. And when the whale vomits him, and that's the New International translation of it, onto dry, dry land, there's God waiting for him, reminding him to go to Nineveh. This time he obeys. He walks around the city, a large city, warning them that the city will be overthrown in 40 days. The Ninevites believe and change their ways and God forgives them. But that was what Jonah thought would happen. He knew it happened and he's angry. In fact, he's so angry that he asked God to take away his life. Better for me to die than to live, he says. So he goes and sits in the shade to contemplate. And God provides him with a leafy plant for shade. And Jonah is happy, particularly about the plant. All is okay, he thinks, but the next morning, God sends a worm. And when the sun comes up, he feels really faint. And now he says again, it would be better for me to die than to live. He's angry again probably angry at the worm, angry at the plants, the red mists are forming in front of his eyes. God says, so why are you angry at the plant? You didn't do anything. You didn't care for it. You, but, you know, you're angry at it. Suddenly, you're concerned about the plant. So shouldn't I be concerned about Nineveh with all those people and all those animals? See, I'm not sure <clears throat> that, that would have put Jonah in a better mood, but the book ends there. But sometimes we're really angry at things that seem to be out of our control. Jonah was angry at God's compassion. And when we look at the reading from Matthew, it's a very similar story. And that's how uh, the lectionary often works, where we have similar themes um, yeah, across the stories. The essence of the story, of course, is that God loves everyone, irrespective of when they come to know him. But you can imagine the scene at any workplace if the employer played those who'd been there all day the same as those who'd only worked for an hour. The employer, of course, reminds them all that they agreed to work for a denarius, but now it seems really unfair for those who've worked all day. Is this righteous anger? 
do they have a point? Well, if we look at it purely from an HR context, then they probably do. The people who've worked all day have a much lower hourly rate than the people who work for an hour. But this isn't an HR contract. This is God's love. Of course, maybe we can feel this about deathbed confessions. Suddenly, after a life of wickedness, that word again, a person suddenly says, you know, I'm now going to accept Jesus into my life so I can have life eternal. So what do you think about that? If you think that's not fair, I've been a Christian for years and years, and then suddenly here comes someone in their metaphorical BMW and pushes into the queue. Well, maybe you need to think about your personal walk with God. I suggest that if you think that being a Christian for a large part of your life is all about giving things up, not doing things, a long slog whilst those who aren't Christians are having a whale, sorry, of a time, then you seem to be missing the point, missing the joy of God's Holy Spirit in your life. Now, don't misunderstand me here. Being a Christian, following Jesus' teachings, is not a golden ticket to everything going well, everything being perfect, because, you know, we're not little robots like Mr. Dayton. They're people who make choices, and sometimes they're the right choices, and sometimes, like Jonah, we run away. But if you allow the Spirit to work within you, then, as Paul says in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The first of those, love, the basis of the parable in Matthew reminds us that Matthew reminds us of what love is. And 1 Corinthians, Paul says, love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not proud. It doesn't dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angry. It keeps no record of wrongs. So, as we move in and out of lockdowns, partial lockdowns, local partial lockdowns, lockdowns that aren't lockdowns, partial, whatever they are, of course, you can start watching Star Trek. There are 780 episodes across 36 series, if you have a few moments to spare. But can I also urge you take the time to read the Bible, pray and seek God's guidance and rejoice in his love. If you want someone to pray with, please join the prayer room at the end of the service. Or if you're in the actual building, then at a socially distanced space, pray with somebody there too. Amen. So we're going to um, have our first song. Um, and uh, one of the great joys of um, the worship lyric videos is that I can choose hymns that I don't like playing, um, but don't mind the words. Um, and um, so that's, uh, that's we're going to um, sit, have a really, really old song. Um, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, um, which is which is not nice to play, um, but um, song 17 of the Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, over to Tim.
strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace the beauty of thy peace Emerging from behind Buddy's head, um, I did wonder which version of the lyrics was going to be because the original ones are almost indecipherable now, they're so old. But uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a very calming um, hymn that, um, that still small voice of calm. When the red mists drop, search for that still small voice of calm. So we'll now um, hand over to Rona for our prayers for the local community and the wider world. Yes, let us praise God now for his lo love to each one of us and his compassion, which comes to each one of us every day. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us now. We're gathered in our various places to come to this time and we've set aside to pray this minute for other people. We come to find renewed strength and purpose for the days which lie ahead. We offer this time of prayer to you now. We first of all pray for our world. We pray that we may care for it and uh, show concern for the area around, around us. We remember in our prayers all those who are suffering, different types of suffering at this time, Lord. Those who are struggling, those who are struggling particularly with the continued restrictions of, of our lockdown. There's lots of people, Lord, anxious about jobs and finances as a result of this COVID virus. There are lots of people ill and there are numbers of people grieving who have lost loved ones. We bring these people to you now, Lord. We think of those people who feel unloved, perhaps feel forgotten or undervalued. May they find strength in your love and comfort. We remember with sadness, Lord, those we have neglected to love as we should have. Strengthen us to love as you first loved us. I'm thinking of dangerous and risky situations, Lord. We pray for people in these situations, helping to bring better situations for others to live comfortably and happily and, and uh, people who are well fed. We pray for these people who work in these situations that we don't really know much about. We pray for those we come in contact with day by day. Our families, our friends, 
strangers and many you we just encounter on the way. By who we are and by what we do, may your love be known and seen. This week, Lord, may we be bold in our sharing of love in word and action, your love in word and action, and accept, Lord, with grace, the love and care others want to show to us. We bring these prayers to you, Lord. We ask for your peace to be with each one of us now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Rona. Just got to rearrange the microphone because the dog has just knocked it out of the way. Um, such is life here. So um, our second and final song is uh, one of my favourites um, and um, written by Stuart Townend. Um, and uh, it's um, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. is all about God's love which is really what Matthew 20 was about 
in um, readings from Galatians that the spirit and the and love is um, what the well one of the uh, gifts of the spirit being love. So we'll now finish with the grace, which uh, Steve is going to lead us. If you can all unmute um, for the general cacophony of sound. Apologies for those uh, on the phones who uh, think this a bit dis uh, orientating. Um, and uh, hopefully the little uh, breakout room, the prayer room button will appear shortly. And if you need to pray about your walk, about the spirit in your life, then please do take the opportunity over the next week or even in the next few minutes. Steve. Thanks, Dave. Thank you for that. Uh, just before we have the grace, uh, there is a video that Tim is going to play for us. Hello, I'm Susan Bly from Room at the Inn and the Y Project. Uh, many of you have probably heard our name over the years because it's been very well supported um, by the church and um, it's sort of coming to say a thank you but also under these challenging COVID times give you a little bit of a mini update. Um, during COVID um, our daytime and our night shelter had to be closed because we couldn't operate under COVID conditions. We went in the travel lodge and we had 38 people who were homeless. Um, that was an amazing experience and gave some people a real opportunity to get their lives back on track. Um, as a result of that, um, there's been, uh, now we've moved out of the hotel, but obviously those people needed places. Um, we've opened a new project called At Museum Street, which is called Room at the Inn at Museum Street. Um, and that will provide 22 places for people day and night um, to assist them in resettlement so that they can hopefully move on to their own accommodation. There's no time limit for that and it's at the person's pace. So the team that we had here, our great team, have gone over to deliver those services. I'm here with volunteers and hoping to get another part-time worker to be able to slowly open up the daytime services which are much needed. We've got people at the moment that we're seeing at the door who are homeless, needing um, you know, needing a wash, needing hot drinks and sandwiches. So we're, we're continuing to provide that service, albeit pretty limited. But we're hoping to watch this space and things will improve. We just don't know, but none of us know. We just have to hope and pray and do the best that we can, really, I think. Um, so that's a, a bit of a little mini update. And in terms of um, Rona and David had, uh, had asked us to do a little... A bit of an update on the harvest. Each year we do share in some of your goods for harvest and if you have any to spare we would be most grateful. I've written a bit of a wish list but it doesn't matter if it's anything outside of that. We'll gratefully receive that and that will go to people who are homeless, people in the daytime service and we'll send some to Museum Street. So things that we need and I've just jotted them down are always small bottles of water cereal bars, biscuits, cup of soups, uh, packets of noodles, tinned soup of any description, tinned fruit, rice pudding, coffee, sugar, milk. Any of those would be great, but as I've said, anything else extra would be provide, you know, provided. Um, we're hoping to, um, I'm working on a newsletter, so which I'll send to David, so we can give you a bit more of a fuller update once we know where we are, which should be the end of next week. Okay, so thanks for listening. So, good delivery, wasn't she? Okay, yeah, so just, that was just, um, just uh, an update on the room at the inn and obviously you know important there is the is the wish list um, as we as we start gathering um, gifts for the harvest collection uh, if you're able to um, help with any of those I'm sure that would be much appreciated let's uh, let's say the grace together may the grace and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and evermore. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.